Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mac Whisperer Academy. I'm Dylan Stewart, the Mac Whisperer, and in today's lesson, we're going to answer the age-old question, how do you scan on a Mac? It should be so simple. You've got that photograph. All you want to do is scan it onto your computer. So you walk over to your scanner, you plop it down, you click a couple of buttons, and like magic, it appears on your computer perfect. Except that's not how it generally works, is it? You know, scanning has so many complications and so many options and so many different ways of doing it that it makes it more challenging than it should be. I mean, the way you scan a photograph is different from the way you scan a newspaper article. And that's different from the way you're going to scan a stack of documents that you want to have show up as a PDF. So in today's lesson, we're going to walk through all the different ways that we can scan, and we're going to make it so simple that you're never going to stumble on it again. Well, the first thing is what you don't do. You don't use the buttons on the scanner for anything. So what you're going to use is you're going to use a software that Apple developed that works with every kind of scanner out there, and it is the only software I ever use to scan. It's called Image Capture, and it's already in your Applications folder. You just didn't know it was there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up Image Capture. In your case, it's probably in your Applications folder. In my case, it's already on my dock because I use it all the time. So let's hop right over to the computer, and let's turn it on. I've got it right down in my dock right here. It looks like this. I'm going to click on it and it's going to open up. Now, when you first open it up, your settings haven't been configured yet, so don't be surprised if it doesn't look perfect. The first step we're going to do is we're going to select the scanner that we want to use. In the upper left-hand corner, you're going to notice two sections. One says Devices, and one says Shared. The Devices section is for any scanners that are plugged directly into your computer, like with a USB cord. Most people don't plug their scanners in that way. Most people have scanners that are part of an all-in-one printer, and that printer is a part of your network. In that case, you're going to find those scanners under the shared section. The shared section is for scanners that are on your network already, not directly connected. In my case, you can see the number 1 to the right of where it says shared. So I'm going to go ahead and hover right over the number 1, and as I do, it says the word show. I'm going to go ahead and click that, and that's going to drop down any available scanners in the network. In my case, there's just one, my trusty office jet. Now, once you've found the scanner you want to work with, you're going to go ahead and click on it on that sidebar, and that's going to cause image capture and your scanner to connect with each other. It can take a moment or two, and once it does, we're ready to get started. Except this is the simple view of image capture, which doesn't give me all the tools and capabilities that we're going to use today. So what we want to do is go down to the bottom right corner and click where it says Show Detail. This is going to open up a panel on the right that's going to give you other tools and capabilities, and it's also going to do a preliminary scan on the flatbed. Before we go any further, let's understand that there are two different ways that most scanners can take documents in. The first one is called the flatbed, and that's accessed by opening the cover and placing something directly on the glass. The flatbed is great if you're dealing with something that's an uncommon size, like a photograph, or something that's fragile, like a newspaper article, or something that's just a single page document, like the recipe that I've got on my flatbed. If you're scanning a stack of paper, you probably want to change the scan mode from flatbed to document feeder. But don't do that yet. We're going to talk about that a little later on in this lesson. But right now, let's stay on the flatbed and let's talk about our options and capabilities from here. As soon as you log in to Image Capture, it's going to attempt to scan whatever's on the flatbed. So as you can see here, it's pulled in an image of a recipe. Now, we have three different choices under the Kind section. We can do color, we can do black and white, or we can do text. I don't want you to confuse text and black and white. Black and white is grayscale, so if I choose black and white, you're going to see this image with a gradient from white to black so that everything looks good, just not in color. But if you go ahead and you change it to text, it's literally just black and white. Images look terrible like this, and it resembles an old cheap fax machine. This is because faxes generally only had black and white, not grayscale. This isn't what I want to scan, and it's not the way I want it to work. 
So why did they create the option of scanning with text? Because sometimes you're dealing with a document that is a white piece of paper with black text on it and nothing else. And this is a great setting for that because it keeps the scan tight and small and gives you a great resolution and great contrast. But whenever you're dealing with anything other than a straight up text document, you do not want to be on this setting. You either want to be on the black and white setting or in most cases, the color setting, which is just going to look better especially if there's color in the document. Now down below that, we see something called resolution. So resolution varies, which is why what we call DPI or dots per inch is so important. You'll notice here that we've got the DPI set to 300. 300 I find to be a really good standard to leave it on. In general, 75 is good enough for most text documents, for most pieces of paper that you're just gonna scan. Photographs or anything that you want a little higher quality, you should probably go to 300. If it's an archival photograph or something you want in an extremely high resolution, you might go up to 600 or 1200 DPI, but that document's going to be a lot larger and it's going to take longer for you to scan. And in most cases, it's not worth it. Why? Because you can't scan something at a higher resolution than it was originally in. So if I have this beautiful photograph here and I want to scan it, I can scan it at 1200 DPI, but it's not going to look any better than the picture that it was printed on right now, which is probably pretty close to 300 DPI. So I tend to leave it at 300. And right below that section, we see a little checkbox that says use custom size. This is a really important setting because some documents, like a standard piece of paper, are a standard size. But some things, like a photograph, or a newspaper article are a custom size. So if whatever you're scanning is not a standard size, like an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you click that checkbox. But if you're scanning a straight up piece of paper, leave it unchecked. When you uncheck it, you get an option to choose the standard size of paper. In my case, I have it set for either A4 or US letter, which are the most common pieces of paper that I use. Some scanners may also have an option for a legal size piece of paper or some even larger than that. Check under the size section to see what your options are. In the case of the document that I've got on the flatbed, this is US letter. So I'm gonna go ahead and change it. And we're gonna notice that that dotted line that goes around the document completely fits perfectly over the page. I'll show you again, when I have it on A4, it's a little off to the side because A4 is eight by 11 as opposed to eight and a half by 11. So as soon as I jump over to US letter, it goes, oh, I got this covered. If you're using a standard size piece of paper, make sure you're not using a custom size. So now I'm going to redo the scan with something that is a custom size so that we can see how that looks. If you ever want to redo a scan or you've adjusted something on the flatbed and want to see how it looks, you come down to where it says overview at the bottom. That will force the scanner to show the computer what's on the glass now. In our case, we've changed it to a couple of photographs. So let's go ahead and click overview and it should just take a moment or two and then you should see whatever you put on your scanner. Now this US letter sized frame completely doesn't work. So I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna click use custom size again. Once you click use custom size, you can manually change the size of that little dotted line. That little dotted line is telling you this is what we're going to scan when you click the scan button. So in this case, we've got three scans. Now I can manually adjust them, but right here I have something called auto selection. So I'm gonna click auto selection and I'm gonna tell it to detect separate items because there's three photographs here. As we can see, two of these, the top left and the bottom one, look perfect, but the one on the top right got split in a weird way. No problem, we can change that by clicking on that photograph so that we see the little dots show up and then clicking on the dot in the middle on the side in order to stretch it over so that it fits properly. That looks better, and yes, that is me with hair. I had hair once, believe it or not. Now sometimes when you're working with small images like photographs, it won't auto-select it properly. No matter how you try to make it auto-select it, it might just not work. But I don't want you to worry at all because you can manually select your scan too. The first thing I'm gonna do is click in the area where you see the dotted line. 
Now I'm going to press the delete button on my keyboard to clear that away. So now we don't have any dotted line anymore and I'm free to draw the bounding boxes as I need them. I'm going to come over first onto the top left one. I'm just going to go diagonally and grab that right about there. We'll grab the second one here like that and the third one here like that. Now we've got a problem with the one in the upper left because it's actually upside down. So once again, we're going to come right into the middle here, click on the photo so it knows which one you're working with. You'll see that little bar. Hover by the right side of the bar, click, and you can just adjust it and flip it the other way so that when it scans it, it automatically scans it right side up. So once you have set the custom size for each of these documents, we're ready to move on to the next thing. Now. In this case, it was three separate documents. But what if it was just one document? So once again, I'm going to click the Overview button to have the scanner refresh itself and show what's on the scanner bed now. In this case, it's a newspaper article. So I don't need it to detect separate items. I'm going to come to the Auto Selection setting here, and I'm going to change that to what's called Detect Enclosing Box. That means that it will do its best to automatically size it based on the furthest edge of the document that you're scanning. In the case of a newspaper article, it probably isn't going to hit it right, but let's see what it does. Let's go ahead and click Overview and give it just a moment as it rescans that image. And here we go. So we've talked about resolution. We've talked about custom size and not custom size. We've talked about these auto selections. Now the next step is where do you want this scan to go? There are lots of options. First of all, I can click and I can have it go to my desktop. The desktop is a great place to save something until you're ready to do something else with it. In many cases, I'll put it on the desktop and then file it or send it to somebody. But I could also send it directly to the Photos app. If you don't see the word Photos app on yours, click on Other and then go locate it. You can go to your Applications folder and select all sorts of things for image capture to send this document too. It's great when you send a photograph to photos because it automatically adds it into your photo library. In a lot of cases, you may be scanning something specifically to send it via email. So you can easily click scan to and mail. And that should allow you to scan that image and open up a new message in mail with that attachment. Really easy. Underneath that, we've got the name of what you're going to choose to call this scan. Below that, we have what is most likely the single most important setting of this entire program. And that is, what format are you going to use? Now you'll notice they've got a half dozen formats here, right? What's this one? What's that one? It really doesn't matter. There are only two that you're going to use 99% of the time. The first one is JPEG. And a JPEG is generally a photograph. The second one is PDF. And a PDF is generally a document. It might also help to realize that a PDF can be multiple pages, but a photograph can only be one page. So if it's a multi-page document, make sure you're choosing PDF. And if it is a multi-page document, make sure you're clicking where it says combine into a single document so that every single one of those pages gets put into one PDF instead of filling your desktop with 50 of them. In this case, I'm happy to leave it as a PDF and I'm going to send it to mail. So we've done the settings we need to do. We've chosen flatbed, we've chosen color, we've chosen the resolution, we've set the custom size, we've adjusted it, we've chosen to scan it to mail, we've given it a name, we've chosen it to be a PDF, and I'm gonna go ahead and click the scan button in the bottom right. All right, here it goes. Here's where the magic happens. We're gonna wait for a moment as it scans this document, and what should happen is once it scanned the document, it should open up an email with that as an attachment. Let's see what happens. And just like that, here's our email ready to go. It looks perfect. It's got the scan saved as an attachment right there, and it's ready for me to type in the address and the subject line and send this puppy on out. So let's go ahead and close that. And let's take a look at what would have happened if we scanned it into photos instead. I'm going to change the setting here. I'm going to leave everything else the same, except instead of a PDF, let's scan that as a JPEG. Photos are generally JPEGs. Now I'm going to click the scan button again. 
and it's going to go through its scanning process again, but this time it should open up the Photos app and import it in. Here we go. Let's see what happens. It's opened up the Photos app, and down at the bottom, there's our article. Let's double click on it and see how it looks. That looks perfect. Now I've added this to my photo library and I can do whatever I want to do there with it. Now that we've scanned it and sent it as an email attachment and we've scanned it and added it to our photo library, let's see what happens when we scan it and put it right onto our computer. In this case, I'm going to save it to our desktop. So I'm going to change the scan to location right to desktop like that. And I'm going to change it from a JPEG to a PDF like this, and I'm going to go ahead and click the scan button again. What's great is that when you scan something to your computer, it makes it really easy for you by popping up what's called the scan results window. And right from that window, I don't have to go hunting and try and figure out where did it save it? Where did it put it? I can just click right in the little magnifying glass that you see to the right of your result. And it opens it right up in the finder, ready for me to do anything else with it. Now I can come in and I can easily rename it, or I can save it, I can file it away, or I can share it with somebody via text, via email, in any way that you would normally share a document. All of these things come together so easily because of the way image capture was designed. So now let's see what happens when we use the document feeder instead of the flatbed. The first thing you're going to notice is that when you change the scan mode over to document feeder, you don't get a pretty little preview of what's on the glass because nothing's on the glass. It's all in the document feeder. But all of our other settings are still exactly the same. So all we're going to do is go ahead and make whatever settings we want. In this case, I'm going to save it to my desktop and I'm going to change the name to website sketch. And I'm going to make it a PDF and I'm going to make sure it's set to combine into a single document. Once I've done all that, I can click the scan button and it will go one page at a time through the scans. It'll let me know here what it's in the middle of doing. It takes a couple of moments to do this and then it will combine those documents into a single page. There's the first page and there's the second page and then it's ready for me to open up and do whatever I want to do with that document. Once again, I can click the little magnifying glass to the right and it will open that document right up for me just as easy as that. So that's image capture, and that's how you easily scan on a Mac. I'm Dylan Stewart, the Mac Whisperer. Go ahead and give us a thumbs up if you like this video so that other people can find it easier, and make sure you subscribe to this channel where we release new tips, tricks, tutorials, and lessons every week to help you get more done in less time with your Apple products. See you next time.